Veronica Hennevig, Simpson, Pennsylvania, a systems theorist. Turn the camera on so we're rolling. Um, well, tell me a little bit more about the Due Process Defenders. The Due Process Defenders were a group of people who had uh, gotten together. Each one of them had been, had a problem in court. Um, with me, in particular, it, it was the driving issue, and I used that word driving in more ways than one, because what it did was it forced me to take a look at the kind of contracts that I had been entering into unwittingly and unintentionally. For instance, the driver's license that I had in Las Vegas, Nevada, in Clark County, Nevada, said on the back of it that I was I was licensed to operate a vehicle that transported 16 or more people or was pla placarded for hazardous material. I would not have even known that to be on the back because most people don't bother to look at the back of their driver's licenses. Do you? No. <laughs> and in fact, it was shortly after that, that was uh, in the 90s, 94, the driver's license was 94. And I realized in looking at an old, an older Georgia license that it said basically the same thing. So, because all law is contractual, my applying for that is saying, yes, I want a driver's license. And in getting that driver's license, I had to lie about who I was. And now, lying about who I was was not what I really wanted to do. I decided that I did not want to participate and get a driver's license any longer. And <laughs> there is a Oh, there's a whole trail of things uh, that goes on, but what I found out is that in, uh, in Nevada, in Nevada, it was, that's what it said on the back of the driver's license. In Georgia, it said that too. But in Georgia, what I also found interesting is that I had returned to Georgia after I left Nevada. When I returned to Georgia, and I had asked about the licensing process again because I had lived in Georgia before. I went to Nevada and I had a driver's license there prior to. When I went back there and I figured, well, let me go ahead because they were saying you need identification. I couldn't cash check without identification and things like that. Now, all of this stuff is government issued. Now, the word issue, if, if something is issued to you, do you have to pay for something that is issued? And I don't think that that's what the word issue means. You shouldn't have to pay for something unless it is, you're being suckered into engaging in a contract. Now, the contract for the driver's license is what I found is adhesive because in Georgia, what they said is you don't have to go to the Department of Motor Vehicles or whatever they call it in Georgia any longer. All you have to do is go down to the supermarket and there was a supermarket that I went to, and inside the supermarket there was a kiosk set up where they were taking people's fingerprints, and right next door to a bank south that was also in this supermarket store. Now, already I knew that I was being used as some sort of a commodity for some reason or another. And when I went ahead and reapplied for the Nevada driver's license, which I found out they would not give me unless I had been authorized to receive that driver's license from Oklahoma, where I had gotten a ticket the year before and for speeding. And I paid it, but I would have to pay them X amount of dollars under federal regulations in order for, for me to be able to get this driver's license in Georgia, or not Georgia, but in Nevada. Now, the, the thing is, you're going to cut and edit, right? Oh. <laughs> the sign kind <laughs> of going all over the place. I, my printer broke, so I don't even have my notes in front of me. The, um, 
I, I asked the people at the, the, that I had called in Georgia, I said, if I agree to pay this fine, am I agreeing that I am engaged in interstate commerce? And they said, that's just what you have to do. Went back to Nevada and I asked again in the, at, at the Department of Motor Vehicles in Nevada, why is the federal government a party with my transaction with the state for a Nevada license? And they said, that's just what you have to do. I said, okay. I said, to the, I, let me talk to your supervisor. I said, I will purchase the driver's license. I said, but I will not lie about who I am in order to get it. I had a Toyota Camry that seated five people. Nonetheless, the woman said that if you don't, if you don't, pay that fine, you will have to pay a $30.50 reinstatement fee and take the test or, or take the test and get the driver's license, which was still cheaper <laughs> than paying whatever it was of 50 or whatever you know, amount that the fine was through the, the feds. Anyhow, when I got to Georgia, getting back to Georgia, and I go to this kiosk, I'm standing in line and I'm watching all these people paying money to this clerk. So this clerk can go ahead, take all their private information and their personal property, meaning their fingerprints, in order at that time, this is back in 1998, to sell to credit card companies, banks, all for the purpose of protecting your identification. I couldn't participate. I made a conscious decision at that time that I would not participate with this commercial, <laughs> commercial uh, scheme that was going on between banks and government or the government departments. I have since learned that under 28 U.S.C. 3002.15 that a department or a commission is definitely part of the corporation of the United States Corporation. All of this kind of makes sense from a systems theorist point of view. You kind of take a look at it, or I, I took a look at it, and I saw just how this was shaping up. <clears throat> All laws contractual. Um, we have unalienable rights, inalienable rights. They can't be taken away from us, but we can give them away. And if we don't, under the 13th Amendment, because Congress says, or they have the power to authorize the implementation of the laws that govern the 13th Amendment, then we can be duly convicted of a crime. Therefore, when I came here to Pennsylvania, it was pretty much the same thing, except here in Pennsylvania, it's under the National Registry. Now, one of the things that I found interesting with the Nevada paper that I got, um, slip of paper that uh, had all the information, where to call and everything else, and it was the same number here in Pennsylvania, they had another number there for my license number, and the license number started with a 99, and it was a nine-digit number. Now, I never had a license anywhere of all the places that I've lived that had 99 as the two beginning numbers of that license. So there is apparently with this contract that we enter into with the motor vehicles um, or Department of Transportation I should say which merged incidentally with the Maritime uh, Administration back in 1981, 82, that there seems to be, it's, it's adhesive in that we're getting another number, but we're not being told we're getting another number. So there is apparently another database. I have my thoughts about where that might be, but, and I'm working on that, but it seems like there was a, these uh, compliance, um, a compliance uh, agency or agent or uh, entity that was set up back in the 1800s, UNZ, 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 I believe it is, company. And they have uh, the harmonization, and the, the harmonization 
in, to, in order to harmonize all of this um, commercial activity that's going on worldwide, there are certain numbers that have been assigned. And this 9-9 is the beginning of a particular uh, commodity. So th this is uh, it's, it's something that if anybody is interested in following that rabbit trail, you know, please do. Um, furthermore, the, because getting back to my particular issue, because I opted here in Pennsylvania also not to, not to contract for that driver's license. However, knowing that I need identification, I went ahead and I opted for a photo ID card. Well, when <coughs> I went to get, or right there in the, in the uh, establishment, when I went to for the photo ID, what they handed me was a sheet of paper where they wanted my social security number or the social security number that was given to me, never supposed to be used as identification, to be able to follow me with this uh, the, the social security number. I refused to do that. However, apparently the biometrics are already involved with the with the, the photo ID and the, the Pennsylvania driver's licenses because, because of what happened, and I'll get to that in a moment. But the <laughs> because I cannot drive a commercially registered vehicle, because when you register your vehicle, you put it into a commercial venue, meaning the state Department of Transportation, and then what you do is you kind of lease it off of them every year. So. Under the Uniform Commercial Code, you're probably the leasor, they are the leasee, and when you turn it over to them, it becomes just the opposite, and you're leasing your own property back. The same with houses and things like that. All laws contractual, and I, I, we don't question, and we need to start questioning. I cannot drive a commercially registered vehicle unless I have a commercial driver's license. However, under the Constitution and the laws that I had been taught that we have, and because I was in the United States Navy, I was a machine accountant third class back before data processing back in the early 60s, I knew a little bit about the law of the flag. So I figured, well, the People that I send to Congress and to the legislature are supposed to be protecting and defending my right of conscience. And under Article 1, Section 3 of the Pennsylvania Constitution, I should have that, that right protected. I shouldn't have to enter under Article 1, Section 17 of the Pennsylvania Constitution. I shouldn't have to enter into any kind of a uh, contract that is fraudulent. I cannot drive a commercially registered vehicle unless I have a commercial driver's license. Therefore, I opted to travel under the flag of my jurisdiction. The flag of my jurisdiction is the one that I swear I, not a swear necessarily, but I uh, pledge allegiance to. The thing is, is that police officers are not trained, or law enforcers, enforcement officers are not. Bill Windsor. Hey, Sandy, I'm good. Four twenty. Four twenty. Come on up. Okay. All right. So can you remember the sentence and go back yes, to the Yes. Law enforcement. <laughs> uh, when when one is traveling under the flag of their jurisdiction, law enforcement officers do not know the difference between a flag and a registration plate at law. So. Um, this has been, it, it's been pretty interesting what has happened. Um, however, it, it's been a learning experience because what I learned is that municipal courts are actually prize courts. Um, 
and that's through Black's Law Dictionary, you'll find that, as well as through the Encyclopedia Britannica, I believe, that there is a long history of how we have, how the laws have been made in order to, it's not necessarily conspiracy, it's just business, and the, they have us, the people, is seemingly wrapped up in this business unknowingly and unwittingly by the contracts that we make with them. Now, what I did with my car in order to get it, and I, I'm going to uh, add this to it too, in case other people want to do this, because no court has ever said it was the wrong thing to do. And here in Pennsylvania, they have actually recently, within the last few months, come out with non-commercial driver's licenses. Now, all of this happened with me back in 2006, 2007. I spent four days in jail on account of this <laughs> um, and a variety of other things. Um, in fact, even the first time I went into court, I was taken and handcuffed before I was even brought before the judge just for asking a question. Anyhow, what, what, I'm, what I'm saying is if, if you're going to get into the fray and you think that you can make a difference, you probably can. However, what you have to do is just be aware that there's going to be a lot of rough spots before things start smoothing out. Now, the, with the, having the flag traveling under the flag of my jurisdiction, meaning the American flag, and the American flag is supposed to look a certain way according to the, uh, the USC, the uh, United States Code. So you need to know what that is and so on and so forth. And what I did was I put a lien on my vehicle, making it my private property. So the Uniform Commercial Code is something that uh, I would strongly recommend that people look into. Um, and find out where you're at with that and how things are supposed to be working and how things are really working. Um, uh, it, it, most people are smart enough to get this, so I, but just need a little tricks along the way and tips along the way. So I would uh, strongly uh, suggest education. Um, what I, I, I also want to say is that I have not sat idly by. I have, I, and when I was in Nevada, I had run for a state senate district uh, back in 1994. When I came here to Pennsylvania in 2004, I ran against an incumbent, um, a congressman, a congressman Don Sherwood. And uh, I was his only opposition. However, most people went in and they just pulled the lever for either Democrat or Republican because it was Kerry against Bush in that election. And they just voted straight party. We had the lever machines here in Pennsylvania at that time. And my name was all the way down at the bottom with the Constitution Party. And last person on the right-hand side, so someone would have really had to look for somebody else on the ballot that was running against Congressman Sherwood at that time. <coughs> Congressman Sherwood, oh, there's Rod. <laughs> Congressman Sherwood was, um, uh, we're, we're not going to go into that. I'm not going to, I mean, there's, there's more there. Um, a con oh, Congressman Sherwood. It was on the board of directors of the United Nations Association of Northeast Pennsylvania in 2002. So was Jim Wanzak, who was the uh, in the legislator, the assembly person for District 114. Um, Chris Carney, who who won as a Democrat in 2006 was also on that board of directors for the United Nations Association of Northeast Pennsylvania in 2002. So was the clerk of judicial records and her husband. And there's, there's a lot more going on. The, the mayor of Scranton, um, Chris Doherty, was president that year or chairman that year in 2002. So 
there's been, there's been things going on for quite a number of years in this particular area. However, when I ran for, uh, when I ran for um, a Congress, I got 7% of the vote, 7 point something percent of the vote, which means that they didn't necessarily knew, know who I was. They, there was over 14,000 people in the 10th Congressional District of Pennsylvania who knew that change was needed and they were willing to take a chance on a third party. So I want to put that out there if this, you know, um, gets out there. There, um, my uncle passed away recently in 2007. When he passed away, I found that um, the the death certificate, the death certificate has a reverse side, and the death certificate appears to be a negotiable instrument. Because my uncle knew that the money has been debt-based since 1965, he also knew that the books needed to be balanced. There shouldn't have to be any kind of a payment made when someone dies. The books need to be balanced, and the the refund of the credits that he has on his account should be going to the beneficiaries. When uh, where do I go? Uh, <laughs> I I can be all over the place. I I don't know what you want. I uh, mean, why are you giving this stuff? So that's what the due process is to do this. <laughs> Due process defenders. Oh, due process defenders. The You're due a right to travel person, among other things. All right. Due process defenders was something that was put together by a fella named, well, Maria, Maria up in Washington State. What was her last name? Mary, do you remember? Shoemaker. Shoemaker? Maria Shoemaker? Yeah, she was part of it. But uh, there were some people in Georgia and uh, Eddie. Andrews, Eddie Andrews, Eddie Andrews, and due process defenders. Basically, I mean stories just like you're hearing on this on this video. People's people's experiences, which has been going on for years and years and years, and. They, they decided to do something about it. So what they did was they put it before Congress. And actually the information, because it was not handled by Congress, was put, I believe it is also been filed in the Library of Congress. But I think that is somebody uh, more knowledgeable about that particular aspect than I. And you'll be meeting with them down in uh, Harrisburg. Uh, we'll be able to tell you more about that. Um, and eventually it did go to The Hague. So I know that we sent our stuff from Pennsylvania because I was the one who took it down. So there has been, uh, because it was not responded to in Congress or by Congress. And uh, the people who were actually doing the, the legwork down in, in Congress, um, I was not part of that, so, but you're going to be meeting with some of them that uh, have. Let me ask you one last question. What, sure. What, if any, are your hopes for the movie? My hopes for the movie, my hopes for the movie is that it will go viral and that uh, it will be as, uh, it, it, it's time, it's, it, the timing is good. The timing is excellent. And uh, your efforts are, are really wonderful in uh, going around like you are. It's just beautiful that you're doing that. And there is going to be a lot more with a lot more, a lot more of their of the terrible things that have happened to them. The worst that happened to me is that <laughs> when they uh, put me in jail for asking a question of why I was still having these fines after I was acquitted of driving without a license and without registration, why they didn't give me back my vehicle uh, for, for one thing. Um, and 
when the, the seizure of my flag, I considered that an act of war. And that was back in 2006, 2005 here in Wilkes-Barre, and then 2006 in Carbondale, Pennsylvania. But the seizure of a nation's flag and the contracts that uh, have been committed to under that flag, that is definitely an act of war. So th these law enforcement officers, I don't know whose laws that they are enforcing, but uh, it certainly isn't the laws of the nation that I pledge my allegiance to. Nonetheless, when they put me in jail, <laughs> when they put me in jail, they said that I, what, what they did was they left six charges on, there was something like 13 charges, and they were all predicated on my having a driver's license or not having a driver's license and not having registration for the car. They acquitted me, I was acquitted of both the driver's license, not having a driver's license and not having registration. The six charges that they left on there was charges that related to my not, like failure to produce a driver's license upon demand, failure to produce registration on demand. My question to the court when I went back to ask why these fines are being charged, something like $250, they want to get rid of me basically. So, and they figured, you know, you have to be a sane person in order, to, it, it, a, a sane person would pay the $250 and just forget about this. Well, what happened is, is I went to find out why these charges were still on there when I got this uh, notice that I had $250, you know, payment due to the Department of Transport, not the, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And when uh, I went into court to uh, ask why these charges were still on there because they're predicated on my not, ha or my having a, or not having a driver's license, and I was acquitted of that, I, uh, this, I w they insisted, the judge insisted that I take this public defender, and this public defender stands up there with somebody else's paperwork, because I'm pointing to it, and I'm saying, who's that? <laughs> and it wasn't even, it wasn't even paperwork from, you know, my file. But anyway, he says a whole bunch of gibberish, I never even got his name. And the next thing I know, I am being handcuffed and taken to prison, and the only way I'm going to get out of uh, the, the jail, or the jail actually, prison is a little bit different, I guess, but the only way that I'm going to get out of jail is if I have a mental health examination or, or, and I put this on a blog so you can see the actual signed order, or pay the fines, okay? <laughs> so. This is an and or kind of a thing. I said, I'll take the mental health evaluation. And because it had nothing to do, it was not uh, relevant to anything that I brought before the court. So I, they asked me where I want to go for the mental health evaluation. Well, being that I work for Tri-County Mental Health, I said, ah, I'll go to Tri-County Mental Health because I work with the people there. I worked in the severely mentally, or, or the severely, um, uh, what do you call, um, uh, uh, severely challenged children, anyway, and also with the, uh, with another program. So, anyhow, and this is going back 20 years ago, but the people were still there. I explained to the therapist who was supposed to be giving me this uh, psych evaluation, uh, I brought in my paperwork and everything, showed them what I was being asked to do, and good mental health is people who care about themselves, care about others, and are able to meet the demands of life. Well, I cared enough about myself to do something about not having to lie about who I am in order to take advantage of a privilege that I already had. Go Windsor. We're at the Hampton Inn. We're at yeah, I said something out last night, but you were probably at work. You're just a mile or so from us. It's, uh, let me see if I can read the phone. Hampton Inn, 876 Schechter Drive. Wilkes-Barre? 
it's about a it's, it's about a mile and a half from the hotel over there. Highland Highland uh, Park Drive. Highland Park uh, Drive. Uh, uh, Highland Park Boulevard. I'm sorry, near um, Wegmans and uh, yes, are we buy an arena. Walmart. We are. Yes, uh huh. Yeah, we buy an arena. Yes. I'm sorry. See you in a minute. Well, when she gets here, she's going to need to go, and I'm going to need to leave. So she, you, don't, you don't have time for me? Uh, can, do you here. Want to, after I go out with her, do you want to jump in here real quick? Why don't you jump in here? I guess, because I, I don't yeah. think there's any time after today. Sure there is. You said you had to leave right away after her. Yeah. She'll carry on for I don't know. All right, well, you start now. Okay. You start now. Because we've heard that we've got the travel day. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, anyway ba basically the... Um, the mental health evaluation went well. Um, they wanted me to pay for it. I said billing advice is as follows, and uh, that the judge that was surety for the one who had set me up for that uh, could take advantage of this. And then I got something from a collection agency down in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, of all places. So they still wanted money, and I said, you know, I said uh, I came in in former pauperous, um, and uh, there is no money, so just balance the books. Let me take it off. Yeah, you're going to have to. I can't get it off. Ah, I got it. 